as the previous chair of the Molecular Epidemiology Group of AACR, we were interested in organizing an interdisciplinary special conference around risk prediction. It's a particularly exciting time for risk prediction. You know, we've learned a lot more about what are the important aspects to help uh, physicians and clinicians think about who's at highest risk of developing disease and therefore who may be targeted for different screening paradigms, as well as risk prediction for outcomes. It's a big job to uh, encourage people to understand that knowing your risk is quite empowering, if and especially if there's something we can do about it. So this conference is really about connecting the dots, trying to get people who are thinking about the causes of cancer and connecting them to the operational arm, which is what do you do about it once you know that you're at risk for some of these diseases. We've got both a very uh, specific methods related topics as well as some broad overviews on the challenges of moving to actual application in the real world of clinical care. Uh, some issues around uh, lung cancer and actual changes in strategies for screening that might be driven by risk prediction models. At the moment, pretty much everything maybe outside of lung is driven by age and family history. And the models are offering us an opportunity to reconsider how we might uh, begin and probably end screening uh, based much more on actual risk rather than really just age. What I think excites me is that this conference is going to bring together not only the people developing the models, but those people who are actually testing those models. So to me, it's having young investigators see that application across a very broad range. We'll hear about uh, new developments in bringing both uh, genetic markers from SNPs and other analyses into risk models and what the uh, benefit, a payoff of that is for the clinic. And uh, there'll also be sessions talking about metabolomics and other uh, advances that might improve risk prediction. No one is ever totally comfortable with a cancer diagnosis, even if it falls into the realm of a good prognosis cancer. So the possibilities of offering benefit are really huge. It's just we need the right strategies, and we need to apply them with the right context to the right patient groups. We're talking about a real broad range of research. It's developing and understanding the biomarker and then, or developing and understanding the lifestyle, how does lifestyle impact cancer risk? Well, this will be a really uh, unique gathering in my books of a sort of thought leaders in the world. We've got Europeans, Australian, US, Canadian investigators uh, who've been studying, designing, improving these methods over the last uh, 10 to 20 years. So for young investigators to come and both here, we're there, at, interact with them, and uh, really see where the field is going from both that senior perspective as well as some of the uh, new advances in methods and application to me is sort of an ideal way for junior investigators to see where they can bring their, their own research or move the field forward. So we need to develop a better way of finding who's at risk, why they're at risk, and what we can do about it. And it's, it's really early days in many ways, but we are making progress. So in this setting where we've had groups building uh, BRCA Pro or other tools that are sophisticated and working in one cancer site to share insights and in a way save us reinventing the wheel for the next cancer, um, seeing what's worked for clinical translation, where have we been able to shorten the tool so it becomes more acceptable for primary care providers to use. Some of those issues I think are cross-cutting, but unless we get everyone in the same room, we don't realize that a group 
somewhere else in the country or in the world has already worked through some of the issues that we may be still struggling with ourselves. Thank you.